in 2018. So no Warframe, no Path of Exile, none of the greats, the giants, the titans. No, these are going to be the up and comers. These are the ones that I found creative, unique, interesting, strange, and it's also going to be on mobile devices. We're talking about PC as well. We're actually talking about all platforms because I just freaking love free games. Yeah. Anyways, I'm ranking these just based on my personal biases. It's all personal here, guys. I'm going to give you my personal review for each individual item on the best 10 free to play games for 2018. So keep the hype alive. Let's jam, guys. All right, guys, starting out the list, I'm going to put one pretty close to my heart, right? It's a really cheesy game, but it's called Warbrokers.io. And I really like this because I was a big fan of a couple of browser based battlefields back in the day. Actually, Battlefield like Play for Free was really interesting. Battlefield Heroes. And uh, generally, I actually just play like a lot of 3D browser games, free to play games like that. Uh, IO games, actually. And this year, we're specifically seeing a lot of awesome 3D IO games. In fact, I did a whole list video on that. And Warbrokers.io was the number one. It runs fantastically. It's, you know, tried and true formula, sure. But I just thought it was just a really quick, clean, good IO game that, yeah, thousands of other players also agree with. Now, it's not the most popular or viral of this year for IO games. But again, personal list, personal bias. And I just genuinely very much enjoyed War Brokers. So yeah, if you're a fan of Battlefield style gameplay, but you want to kind of jam on, you know, with, with anybody anywhere at any time, yeah, you can do that. It's got your vehicles, it's got your shotguns, your rocket launchers, it's got your, your tanks, your cars, your crazy buildings, actually. I mean, for an IO game or a 3D one, you wouldn't expect the maps to be so big and detailed, but like, they actually are. So yeah, simplistic graphics and such, but um, you know what? It actually runs pretty good for how complicated it actually is for an IO game. So for that reason, it's gonna make the list. All right, guys, coming in at number nine is a game that I also put in another top 10 for hide and seek games, and that's going to be Light Bears. Now, if you know, I'm a fan of asymmetrical games. I'm like the one person on this entire platform that did even a list video on asymmetrical multiplayer games, let alone hide and seek games. So Light Bears is absolutely up my alley. So the idea is you're a bear that lights up. Get it? Light bears. But it's asymmetrical because the enemy seekers are shadow monsters with different abilities. And it's kind of layered, but also as a light bear. You know, if you want to kind of just run it out, uh, there's double jumping. Uh, there's a lot of platforming. The map design is very arena shooter-ish. Also, like, I mean, the natural instinct is to run into like a dark corner, but you emit light. You're a freaking lighthouse. Um, Maybe it's better to actually run into somewhere more bright, more open. Or, you know, run it around with your other bears because you actually have a saving mechanic. Uh, so if a shadow monster captures a light bear, you can actually stop that capturing process uh, by tagging them. So it's like a mix of freeze tag and manhunt because eventually you do actually uh, reach an end. There is a safe point that spawns. And yeah, obviously a hide and seek game in its purest sense. So it is very minimalistic and it looks really cutesy. You know, fluffy little bears versus little shadows. But it's actually kind of a vulgar game with a little bit of comic humor that's definitely meant for a mature audience. So all in all, it's got a weird mix of aesthetic and mechanics that, uh, yeah, no, it just screams me. So hopefully that appeals to your uh, bear sense too. Get it? Okay, yeah. All right, next up on our list here, number eight is such a surprise, Honkai Impact 3rd. Now, normally I really like online action RPGs and I'm really just getting into action RPGs. And it's kind of funny because I've been diving into this genre mostly because of the mobile space. There's so many good ones out there. And the one that really I think is blowing everyone away this year is the free to play Honkai Impact 3rd. It's gorgeous. You might even not believe me that it's a mobile game. Yes, it's a mobile game. It's not a port or anything like that. It's this is a mobile game and it's even taken so seriously they have freaking competitions. There's entire streamer channels, uh, YouTube channels that pretty much just cover Honkai Impact 3rd because there's just that much going on to it. Now, it is a game where you kind of hero collect, sort of. It's a collecting girl game in a way. You do have different characters and different versions of those characters. And though it does uh, matter what, what your party composition is, there's kind of a rock, paper, scissors, elemental thing going on there. It's still a pretty mechanics based game, despite it being mobile. I mean, the, the sweeping to dodge, the swiping, that feels really great. I actually really love tapping on the screen uh, a lot of the times. It's just a few buttons, sure, but there is meaningful choice uh, in each action that you have, where a lot of games you can do a lot, a lot, especially Spectacle Fighters, and you have a lot of buttons, but in the end, it, it really just amounts to you do damage, you hit them, they stun lock, and then that's it. This game, while it simplifies the overall inputs, that doesn't mean that the game is actually simplistic with its overall tactics inside the game. And all I can say is, please play it. Give it three hours of gameplay because it definitely starts out really easy. Trust me, there's a reason why people are taking it so competitively and so serious, despite it being, you know, just another mobile, pretty looking game. Oh, by the way, I will, I will end on that, though. The aesthetics, the graphics. Oh, my God, this is an amazing looking game. I'd put it in my top five best looking mobile games, period. But trust me, it is absolutely more than that. Okay, number seven, guys, Sadorka Sunset. 
I actually really liked this game here because um, it was just really weird and cutesy. Now, I'm not such a big fan of gacha style systems, of loot boxes and things like that, so this game definitely has it. I would put it higher though if it didn't have those kind of systems, but it is totally free to play and it does have a story intermangled within it, I want to say, uh, because it takes from the perspective of somebody who can kind of move around, I think, time and worlds-ish? I don't know. You kind of go around at least a particular world and you're looking through a different um, perspectives of different characters and you're actually managing different different parties around different times and I guess they kind of intersect sort of and it tells a grander story I still need to go deeper into it uh, but basically yeah it's it's kind of like I don't know it's an RPG obviously but it's like a puzzle RPG like you you actually ah, it's so weird you do spells by connecting dots and you, it's almost like Tetris meets Final Fantasy in a way. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, but of course, it's really big on the RPG mechanics, the progression mechanics, leveling up your different characters, unlocking them through the gacha style, but playing through the stories, playing through the events. And yes, everything starts out very disconnected, but it all starts to come together. At least that's what I'm feeling at the moment. And oh my God, another gorgeous game, 2D. Such a unique art style. And I think that the story actually, normally these games that have story bunny ears, is lame and too childish or illy translated and i actually kind of feel like this is okay like i was i was reading all the text i was having fun with the characters they had character and uh, well in a game about unlocking characters and seeing the story unfold with those characters i would hope so so yeah sadorka so sunset a very strange game not for everyone but i think it was for me number six maple story 2 Yep, that's kind of my big bias there is I like online games, I like social games, and the original Maple Story kind of turned me off because it was dated, you know, whenever I tried to get into it. The UI was super cluttery, I didn't enjoy the gameplay overall, I really liked the concept though, and basically everybody played Maple Story. But when I attempted it, I was just a little bit late to the party, so luckily we had a uh, after party here with Maple Story 2. It's a different game aesthetically, and I guess uh, physically, yeah, you're going to play it a little bit differently. But on paper, it's actually the same game. You know, it, it's still got that kind of mini game, uh, maybe even more mini games than ever uh, kind of feel. There's a lot of custom creativity, like people are making clothes and like music and stuff, I think. Like, what's going on with that? I got to look into that. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are playing Maple Story 2 in a way that you wouldn't expect. Of course, there is the, the face value type of way to play the game, which is uh, 1 through 50 is the tutorial. You just run through it and it's just a massive, very repetitive, grindy grind game. And that's kind of OK. Uh, later on, as I'm playing, I'm starting to see some dungeons and seeing some challenge and I'm kind of enjoying that. I actually really appreciate that. I'm playing the spell sword style uh, class. I know a lot of people uh, face roll with a zerker, but uh, I think the, the mage class and the gun class looks pretty cool. I want to see them add new classes, which they did throughout the lifespan of Maple Story, and I want to see the story itself actually progress, because unlike many grindy games, uh, they don't have stories, but this one does, actually, uh, which can be annoying. Again, levels 1 through 50 is like a giant tutorial. It can be kind of slow paced. Some people just want to jump into the grind. But I think for a lot of casual people, which, oh my god, this game aims at, this is like, hey, anybody who's ever wanted to play an MMO light or a grindy action RPG, come to us. We'll teach you how to play. Yeah. Uh, so for veterans, I think you're going to put up with it anyways. But uh, for everyone else, you're going to really enjoy the uh, overall curve that Maple Story 2 has to offer. And if you're a little bit more creative, there's more options for you there as well that I need to explore myself. So yeah, Maple Story 2, it earns its spot here. And yes, it's even despite being published by Nexon so far. All right, guys, halfway on the list, we have a game that was actually number one on my hide and seek list, which is SCP Secret Laboratory. I really liked how this game is coming about. Uh, you know, it's run by Patreon and donations. It's still early access. Uh, the SCP universe has been around for a little while. There have been SCP games, but Secret Laboratory is somewhat newish. I mean, it's still early access, obviously, but this game has such a following already. So much momentum. Secret Laboratory is based on the idea of asymmetrical multiplayer, and it's kind of hide and seek, but it's like really wibbly wobbly. Okay, so you have like three different factions, kind of you have like the monsters, which are SCPs, which is a modern open source mythos kind of thing. It's like X-Files, but anybody can kind of add to it. Uh, they're objects that do weird, you know, kind of Doctor Whoish wibbly wobbly stuffs and end the world. They're monsters that just break, snap your neck, things like that. Okay, anyways, so you have different monsters, different abilities. Some players play them. They run through a laboratory. They're trying to uh, kill everyone and <laughs> trying to escape, I guess. Uh, then you have your D-class citizens, which are kind of like, I, I guess, kind of like prisoners in a way. Then you have your scientists. Then you have your military personnel. And then there's another chaos military personnel that come about. Um, So it's kind of like 
multi-faction, multi-faceted, where you have relationships where it's like, you want to help out the scientist, but sometimes maybe you want to betray the scientist. Uh, so, like, sometimes a monster can actually befriend a D-class person who would normally want to run away and monster want to eat them. It's very weird, very strange. So it's asymmetrical in, like, multiple wibbly-wobbly ways that's hard to describe in the time allotted for a top 10. But if you like Twilight Zone-ish kind of monsters and, and events, but in a game where you fight other players, I don't know, this, this could be kind of for you, dudes. Alright, next up, number four is a game called Iron Sight. Now, I actually did a full review on this, one of the very few games that I, I decided to do that for, because I was kind of impressed. Normally, I pride creativity over everything, which is why a lot of games made it on this list, but Iron Sight was just kind of that good of a clone. I mean, I was just really impressed that it's like, okay, this is Call of Duty, oh, some very small changes here and there, but it's basically, this could have been Call of Duty free to play, and yeah, that was it. I think it would have done so much better if it launched on Steam, hopefully it does eventually, because all the other Call of Duty clones and Call of Duty modern military light games do really well, despite being kind of bad on Steam. Like. The audience wants this kind of game, uh, so it's been a little bit out of the limelight. Not too many people talking about it, a few people did a couple of videos, again, I did, but in, in the end, like, Ironsight is extremely solid. Overall, the netcode I had a lot of fun with, um, the graphics, it ran great, it just, in every level, and I appreciated the different weapons. It is a little bit post-modern military, it's kind of futuristic, I appreciated that. You got, like, you know, mechs, uh, turrets, and, you know, weird gadgets, I, I like it. Uh, some fun game modes, and overall, like, I, I had fun actually kind of making a little montage out of this game as well, so I don't know what that's Saying. But yeah, uh, it's basically the free-to-play uh, advanced warfare Call of Duty. But trust me, uh, there's some small little balance tweaks that makes this like legitimately potential for competition. But uh, we're gonna need some more players. So for that, it's not a little bit higher. All right, number three, and debatably, should it be? I don't know, but I'm going off of my past experience throughout the entire year. In the very beginning of this year, I had so much fun with Realm Royale. And I guess you can, I'm kind of cheating because I'm, it's kind of a twofer. I'm saying Paladins and Realm Royale because it, it's still, Paladins, I think it's still early access technically. I don't know. And Paladins, is it was kind of really fun also at the beginning of this year. But regardless, it's really Realm Royale that I want to talk about. Um, they kind of squandered a little bit of Paladins, but oh my God, did they drop the ball on Realm Royale? No, no, yeah. A number three on my top 10 list. We're going to talk about the negatives because I had that much fun. That first week of Realm Royale was some of the most fun I've ever had in a Battle Royale game ever. I put it at like my number two. Two, favorite battle royale. It was a magic based battle royale with lots of abilities, high skill ceiling, uh, physics were very engaging as well, a lot of cool stuff that you could do with traversal with the mounts, and a lot of balance, funness, fairness with the forge system, so that there was a lot less RNG overall, but it's still of course it was battle royale, you still have that chaos. And I love the color of the game and it ran so good, which was strange coming from Paladins, or I guess not strange because after a while Paladins became more solidified, but regardless. Anyways, um, both are cheesy games, and in the end high res Man, they couldn't just let their cheese sit and be the comical funness that it was, and they decided to go even further cheese, try to make it easier, you know, put in a ton more hitscan weapons, and they, they just really fudged it up, didn't they? Realm Royale. And to an extent, Paladins, but Paladins, they, they rebalanced it, you know, they're listening better to the community with Paladins. And I heard that they're listening to the community with Realm Royale. Maybe they can pick up the pace and regain some momentum, but wow, they really dropped the ball, and it ain't snowballing, baby. But maybe, maybe in the future it can come up. But I honestly would have put this number one if it didn't fall so hard, so detrimentally. And you know my phrase, right? Keep the hype alive. Well, once it's dead, yeah, uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But um, for now, I got to honor it for the times that I did have earlier this year. It does and will remain at number three. Number two, guys, is a game that I literally just played. Like, I, I just played this game and I gotta throw it all the way up here at the list. Of course, then again, if I just played Realm Royale, you know, when it was in its peak, maybe that would've been number one too, like I said. But Ring of Elysium is another Battle Royale game, and of course, it's an emergent genre. I'm gonna talk about some Battle Royales, guys. Uh, but Ring of Elysium is actually from the developers of the guys who ported uh, PUBG to mobile. Well, so it's gonna be competitive in China, it's gonna be big there, uh, but it's also already freaking popular here. But yeah, it's kind of PUBG-ish. It is a PUBG clone, except, Kind of similar to Iron Sight with some small twists, but actually there is one big aesthetic twist that kind of makes this whole thing its, its own thing. Uh, and that, it, it takes place in an icy, uh, snowy area, completely snowed in, right? Ring of Elysium has the gimmick that it is an encroaching giant storm Ymir that you have to run away from. Unlike using circles, it actually uses set geographical points, so the map balance overall is designed better. No bad circles that are off the edge of the island or anything like that on a mountain, no. It's all balanced uh, appropriately. Then there's tons of traversal mechanics, tons as in you actually choose a class, so you can choose glider or freaking snowboard or a climbing kit, I, I don't know. And then you even have like ski lifts, uh, lots of different 
different types of vehicles and interesting, I would say, driving mechanics uh, with, the, with the environment that it is. Uh, rocky and snowy, trees, uh, hilly. Yeah, uh, honestly, it's really just fun just snowboarding around and SNGing people. Sure, it's good stuff. Overall, it actually feels really tight. It's not that glitchy. It could always be polished better and better. But then again, PUBG, H1Z1, etc. Those games could as well. I think this game sits really fun, finally, in between something like arcade like H1Z1, but it still doesn't actually lack too many simulation mechanics. Like, you're not gonna lean, I don't think there's technically as many attachments, but Ring of Elysium is like basically PUBG plus H1Z1, not minus mostly. It really feels like it's a best of both worlds somehow, so I really think that this game's gonna take off, especially, you know, being freaking free to play. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our number one to end the video here for top 10 free-to-play games of 2018 by me, your boy, Skylint. I'm talking about Dauntless, guys. This game, I actually did play more than Monster Hunter World. And frankly, it's because it's on PC, it's free to play, it's just like really easy to jump in and stream. It is kind of a, a sort of minimalistic Monster Hunter, but it actually kind of goes above and beyond uh, in terms of like magic uh, with the whole Aether system that they got going on. Monsters have like these elements and you know, they cast like magic basically, like they're zippity zapping, teleporting around, pulling into shadow realms and shit. It gets kind of strange and ridiculous. Uh, so I like that. I'm very hungry for a game like Dauntless, which is more like an action packed kind of MMO encounter, really. At least uh, generally MMOs have dungeons and raids that have encounters that feel like this versus the, and it's kind of funny saying it, but in comparison, yeah, down to earth Monster Hunter. But then again, Monster Hunter is the atlas of the genre, and it is also on PC, and objectively, it is just a bigger and better game. It does some things differently, but it's just a bigger game, and Dauntless definitely needs to stay Dauntless, stay hungry, and keep giving us content, and hopefully at a quicker rate, but for my time in it, I actually had a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't have to pay for a PlayStation Plus, I didn't have to buy a $60 game, but the game is kind of grindy, it definitely incentivizes monetization, uh, but hopefully they continue to focus on just cosmetics, rebalance the game, make it not as grindy, it is a little bit repetitive because of lack of content, but I think as time goes on and on, this could be like a new Path of Exile, a new Warframe, you know, uh, the new next AAA free-to-play game that we're all going to adore and love. It's just right now, it's getting kind of one, two, three, four freaking combo punched by uh, Monster Hunter and a bunch of other competing uh, games in uh, the grindy action RPG genre. But for me personally, no, guys, this is my number one new game of 2018, and I did technically play it more than its biggest competitor, which I agree is a better game. There's just something kind of really awesome and, and magical about fighting these big magical behemoths, you know, with your friends. We're done with the list. You can leave now. But before you do, I just want to say, please follow me over at twitch.tv slash where you can find me playing these games and playing, you know, future games, actually covering them always uh, and checking them out and then moving that over to the tubes, right? If it's a first look or if it's part of the footage for the top 10 or just the experience, hopefully you can be there for that uh, or play literally with me and collab with me. Actually, I love doing collabs. Uh, my past video and probably the next video here will be a collab. So I really appreciate it. And that's also just part of why I love free to play games. It's so easy to play with your friends, with your family and have a time and share that experience and make